Right Like ZQ wants to know if you have any acting projects in line after uh, American Horror Story 2. I want to go back on stage, uh, you know, so I feel like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my schedule right now. I mean, obviously, uh, I'm going to be booked up through the end of this year with I'm doing a movie in July and then uh, and then American Horror Story, and that'll take me to the end of the year. So I'm looking at the window at the beginning of 2013, and I really want it to start on stage. So I don't know uh, if and when that'll happen, but that's my, my plan. And then, you know, there's always stuff percolating, but nothing concrete at this point. So I'm confused about the schedule for American Horror Story then. So you don't actually go into production till late summer? And then when does the... In other words, I'm a diehard fan. You're, you're telling me I'm going to have to wait a long time to see season two? Uh, when yeah. will it actually be on the air? I think they like to, uh, to premiere it around Halloween. Oh, so okay. I, I mean, that's what they did last year. Uh, I think it'll be October when it comes back. So we'll still be shooting while the show starts airing. So you know, Wow. That's really close to, you know, uh, production airtime, isn't it? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you the difference this season, which I think is going to be a, another really exciting thing, is, you know, last season it happened so fast. And they were really, really up against the wall at, in the writer's room in terms of, you know, we were getting pages like the day before we started episodes, you know, they weren't fully complete. It was it's kind of exciting and exhilarating, I'm sure more for us than for the writers and for Ryan, but, uh, but it was a really cool uh, thing to watch them deal with it and they dealt with it so well. But the good news is that this year they have such a head start on it that the, by the time we start shooting there's already going to be like six or seven scripts written. So they're going to be well ahead of the game this year. They're going to really, I think it'll allow them to really chart the season and plot things even even more uh, even even more surreptitiously and uh, hopefully that'll make a, a difference. You know, that's really interesting that what you're saying because I was uh, on the lookout throughout the whole first season for laps of logic in the, uh, you know, the logic of the story. For example, uh, the Tate character says at one point uh, to the girlfriend, Violet, uh, when the ghosts are coming at her, he says, just close your eyes and tell them to go away and they'll vanish. Don't worry about them. So I'm thinking every time a ghost goes to kill one of the people well why don't they just say go away and close your eyes i think that was the only lapse of of course the, the only lapse of the logic of the show that i found except uh maybe that's not a lapse because the uh the other characters didn't know that's all they had to do was close their eyes but well, let me say this what i absolutely loved about the show was if you're just getting sheets you know right before you shoot a scene and that means you don't know of course where the story's going and the utter brilliance of the show was it's dual finale the uh to see the the plot line of, of jessica with the evil spawn of a child and and up against the other uh finale at the house in the front door with uh, connie Britton and the family as good ghosts chasing out people who are coming into the house uh who might be hurt by the bad ghosts and i just it's, it was one of those moments as a viewer of of great tv i got a chill and said wow you've nailed it <laughs> that's great wow so you just didn't know where this was all heading yourself then, as the show was going on. Well, I said, you know, when, when Ryan, it was, it was for me, because Star Trek II got pushed by a couple of months. We were originally supposed to start earlier. So I thought that I was off the market, so to speak, and, uh, and, and I was, you know, all of a sudden I had a window of availability, and, uh, and, I, and I started to poke around and reach out to my agents and say, hey, you know, if we're not going till January, then let's find something for me to do. And literally, the day after I said that, and, and apropos of nothing, I got the call from, from Ryan. And, uh, and so it just sort of worked out so well for me. Um, but I, I really didn't, I really thought I was going to be there for like maybe two episodes. You know, they said it could be anywhere from one to four episodes. So I thought, all right, I'll probably be due to, I thought the two-part Halloweener would introduce me and then maybe, uh, maybe I'd do one more after that. But, but yeah, it was really interesting how it unfolded because I, I kept becoming you know, uh, more of a part of it as it went on. But I, but I didn't know exactly where it was going, no. I and certainly didn't know I'd have to put the rubber suit on when I signed <laughs> off. <laughs> and it certainly sounds like they didn't know either. That's, that's amazing. Well, I think that some things. I mean, I think that, you know, the, the fact that they didn't necessarily have scripts written is not necessarily indicative of the fact that they didn't know what was going to happen. Um, you know, I think they have to board out a story that's complicated pretty early on in the season. But, uh, but I think it was just a matter of what they... Uh, it was a matter of, of what they had actually on, on the page. Right, right. Uh, Daniel, let me come to you again here. 
uh, you played some very you played the very flamboyant villain role in Heroes and and another flamboyant character in American Horror Story and contrast that with Spock who's very reserved in Star Trek. Uh, is there one kind of role? That I'm losing Daniel a little bit. What did you say? You say it again, Daniel. I think he's saying, is there one kind of role that you like to do over the other? The reserve Spock versus the uh, the big showy characters. Mm. No, I, I, I don't really I don't really respond to the bombacity of a character so much as I respond to the integrity of a character, the depth of a character, uh, the complexity of a character. Um, you know, I, I feel like there's there's as much to be learned and enjoyed in playing a character that's as reserved as Spock as there is in playing a character that can be a little bit more uh, expressive. Although now, after eight months of, you know, prepping the movie and then shooting the movie, and we just finished the movie last week, so I feel like uh, I feel like now I'm, you know, after I finish a character like that, then the next thing I would like to do is yes, I'm excited to go back to the next two things that I'm doing. I think are a little bit of a departure from that uh, energy of Spock, and I, and I like that. I, I like diversity ultimately. I think, as any actor probably would tell you. Um, and I feel lucky that I've had an opportunity to play a lot of different characters. I, w I would love to see that you know, continue. Well, the real Cherry wants to know, and among Twitter posters here, to really test your diversity uh, ambitions here. And that is, I, I know having read some uh, the bio material on you, that you started off early with uh, musical theater. Uh, the real Cherry wants to know if you, if you have any interest in doing a musical on Broadway. I do. Um, you know, I think I want to do a play on Broadway first. Um, you know, I, I did study musical theater in college. I went to Carnegie Mellon and uh, and kind of made a decision throughout my time there that uh, I didn't really want to pursue it, so to speak. Uh, I didn't want to go to New York and, you know, try to, to, to host it in the cattle calls or whatever. But, I, you know, I... I, I am interested in it. It has to be the right. Uh, it has to be the right experience and the right role, and you know, and, and it could be on Broadway. Or it could also be in a in a film. I'm I'm kind of almost more interested in the idea of a mu musical film. Um, so we'll see. Those seem to have found their way to the mainstream these days. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm open to it. Well, you seem to have the magic touch in all these fields, uh, and you're a survivor uh, with. Uh, Heroes and uh, Star Trek, and with American Horror Story, and uh, these movies that suddenly get on the map in a big way at the Oscars. Uh, what's the magic touch? How do you do it? Oh well, God, if only I knew. Uh, you know, I never feel like I have the mag magic touch. Isn't that funny? Uh, I feel like I'm constantly looking for more, and and part of my part of my journey is to be grateful for where I am and to really, really experience what I'm in the middle of, and, uh, and, and maybe that's the magic touch, which I'm still trying to cultivate in my own journey, but, uh, but I've been very, very blessed, I feel very grateful, I feel, you know, uh, really challenged and, uh, and rewarded all at once with the work that I've done and the people that I've been able to surround myself with creatively and personally in, in my work, so uh, I can't really ask for more. Well, what about okay. comedies? We have a poster here named SRA I-27 who wants to know what, uh, if you want to branch out into comedies. Definitely would love to do more comedy. It's a very, very interesting thing, you know, when, when, when you become known for or associated for roles that are so, uh, you know, specific, uh, either dramatic or, or scary or sci-fi, you know, it's like, a, it's like these niches. Um, when I was a young, idealistic kid just out of college and moving to LA and sort of wanting to be successful and wanting to have an opportunity f to share my work with people, um, I, I never was really specific about what that meant, you know, so, so I took what came and I, and I went after what was in front of me and then the more I achieved what I set out to accomplish, the more I realized that as many opportunities as uh, can be generated by that, also uh, it can be somewhat, people see you in a specific way and it's difficult to break out of that, so for me, uh, you know, I, 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 I fancy myself hilarious, <laughs> uh, and I would love to do some comedy, and, and, you know, I'm cultivating that within my company right now, and I'm reaching out to people, uh, you know, through my agency and my management company, and, and when I take meetings and when I read scripts, you know, I'm very specific about that with all those people, so uh, I'm sure it will happen, uh, it's just a matter of the right time and the right, right project. 
Do you have any fun stories for us, uh, behind the scenes stuff about the shooting of American Horror Story? You know, was there, uh, for example, you, you hear stories about uh, when George Clooney films a movie, practical jokes being played among, among the actors, or you sometimes in other films you hear about sets falling in on you, disasters and stuff. So uh, it's always fun to those of us on this side of, of right. uh, experience to ask you guys on that side. Did anything really go wrong that was, that was interesting during this production? I really don't think that anything went wrong, at least with me, you know. Um, I, it's always interesting for me, I don't know how fun this kind of story is, you know, it's always interesting to read something on the page, like he gets thrust into the apple bobbing bucket and, you know, is thrashing around until his neck is broken. And it's always interesting for me to, like, show up on the day and, like, see the bucket full of water with the apples in it and, like, to just have that moment where you just have to commit, you know, you just have to, you just have to jump into the bucket. So, so, so I was like, all right, you know, bring it. It's like those kinds of moments uh, are, are interesting more than they are fun, but I never really had any kind of, there was no practical jokes, um, at least this time around. Um, when we talk about Star Trek at some point, when we talk, talk about the sequel of Star Trek and I go on that press tour, we're going to have plenty of practical joke stories on that, on that, on that tip. But American Horror Story, is a, it's a very professional set, you know, it's a very, it's a, there's a lot to get done. There's a lot of stunt work. There's a lot of uh, special effects shots. So there's not a particularly um, copious amount of time to, to play tricks. But maybe this season I'll play some tricks so we have something to <laughs> Good, yeah, you've, you've got it. And now you've just teased us about Star Trek II uh, behind the scenes stuff. Give us a little bit of that. Well, we had an epic, uh, we had an epic, epic um, uh, practical joke, but, uh, but it, was, it, was, it was too long, it was too complicated to explain now. We've got we've to really hone in our ability to explain it because it was like a week long uh, practical joke that happened up north with like basically involving the entire cast and crew. It was pretty exciting, but um, you know, that's a very different kind of. A movie is a very different kind of energy from a TV show. A movie that big is a very different kind of energy for that TV show. You have, you know, six months to shoot the film, uh, and you have eight days to shoot one episode. So it's uh, so there's there's a lot more. Let's get to work energy. I think on a TV set, usually anyway. If you could uh, have your druthers about season three of American Horror Story, you're a storyteller by trade. I mean, you're producing films and things. Uh, if you could start with a uh, blank page and sit down with Ryan and, and the gang and say, I would love this uh, horror so story setup to be, uh, would you like that opportunity? Do you have some great ideas? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like... Uh I feel like also, it, 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 I think any kind of storytelling is about a class, especially in film and television, it's about collaboration, you know, and, uh, and, and those, Ryan's mind and Brad Falchuk's mind and the writers that they've assembled uh, are so incredibly facile and, and, and adroit, like, they're just so, their imaginations are so incredible that I feel like to sit down and, and have a blank slate to be like, because, because, Listening to Ryan talk about this season a little bit, it's so unexpected. You know, it's so it, it really it, it draws in elements from all over the spectrum of of, of horror film storytelling. And um, yeah, I would love it. I would love it. I would love to just get it and play around. I have some ideas, sure, but I feel like their ideas would be more inspiring. And then you know we'd build on it. That's that's the thing about when I sit around my office here with my business partners and we're talking about projects that we want to develop or ideas that we have. That's my favorite part of the process is to you know, literally just get in a room and bounce ideas around. It's what JJ and Damon and Bob and Alex do to write their stuff. It's what, you know, I think anybody who really is inspiring to me, um, although I guess there's the version of the people that just sit in their rooms and come up with stuff on their own, I'm just not exactly like that. I, I tend toward the other, uh, the other version of it, which is, hey, let's like bandy about ideas and come up with what makes the most sense and is the most exciting. Um, but everybody's different, I suppose, right? Did you ever find out who dreamt up the rubber suit for you? <laughs> what twisted mind came up with that for a Chad as a uh, personality quirk? Ryan, but I can't be 100% sure about that. <laughs> just, a, just an educated guess. All right, Zachary, we're going to sign off and say thank you very much for joining us. Good luck at the Emmy Awards. We'll see you at the uh, Nokia Theater in September. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Thanks.